This is part one of a three-part series that you could call everything you've ever wanted to know about Liberty Coach. I had the opportunity to have a sit-down interview with Frank Koenigsever, who's the Vice President of Liberty Coach, and we're going to talk about its past, its present, and where they're headed into the future. We're also going to talk about what separates Liberty from other motorhome converters, and we're going to focus in on this segment, Liberty Interiors, and how they've evolved through the years. Of course, we're going to talk about the paint, because that's a big thing with Liberty coaches. So sit back, relax, and enjoy part one of this series. With me is Frank Koenigsetter. He's the co-owner and vice president of Liberty Coaches. Now, let me establish right up front. We're at the Heartside Grove Motor Coach Resort. Your Liberty lot here is just one of the most beautiful, magnificent, I, I guess do you call this a coach lot, or, or what would you call this? Well, it's a coach lot. My parents actually are the ones that developed this, I guess it's been uh, five years ago, these two lots. I mean, as so. you can see, it's quiet and serene, What you can't see behind us. You have a wonderful kind of patio portico area. I know that whenever I come by here, you're entertaining a lot of Liberty owners. Mm -hmm. It just looks like a a fun but very comfortable place to be. Now, let's go on and go backwards for a minute. I know when I think of Liberty Coach and the people that I've spoken to, it is that name alone. It's, you know, with, with Prevo Conversions, of course, it, it's opulence, it's wealth, it's glamour, it's glitz. What are the roots of Liberty Coach? Well, Liberty Coach was actually started uh, by my parents uh, and with building the first coach in 1968. So we're actually going into 50 years of coach conversion. Uh, the first coach was a uh, Greyhound bus that had approximately two and a half million miles on it. Uh, Dad had a contract with uh, Greyhound in our aluminum foundry, which his father started in 1937. Uh, he decided to buy an old 1954 35 foot 4104 chassis, uh, gutted it did the interior. Uh, he's a craftsman, wood, woodman, woodworker by trade. Uh, so he did the cabinetry, hired out some other people to do the electrical and plumbing and what have you, and uh, took about a year to finish the coach. And uh, we took trips in it, family trips, and uh, Greyhound um, saw this as a way to be able to move through their depreciated chassis instead of sawing them up. So uh, Greyhound and my dad kind of did a partnership together and uh, we would uh, take old buses and convert them into motorhomes and show them uh, throughout the country with Greyhound starting really with FMCA at that time, Family Motor Coach Association. And then uh, moving through uh, years, uh, we get into 1978 at the Sioux Falls, South Dakota FMCA Summer Convention and uh, uh, Prevo uh, at the time, which would have been Andre Norman, and, uh, Bill Campbell, and Tom Harbison, came to uh, our display, and they took my dad away for an entire day. Uh, he came back and showed us this bus that we were going to do an interior on, and our dream was always do the interior of a new MCI. So looking at this bus, we had no idea what it was. We'd never seen one before, and. Uh, that's how we basically started with Prevo. We were the first ones to get involved with Prevo, and that was in 1978. So we're 40 years into that relationship. Uh, finished that coach in 1979, uh, displayed it at the Del Mar, California Winter FMCA Convention, and we sold 12 units at that first show. I don't want to call you, you were a backyard builder at that point, but you probably didn't have the facilities that you have now. How were you able to keep up with that demand? Well, Dad decided that he was going to tell them that they could have their coaches within one year. We hadn't built 12 total units at that <laughs> point. So uh, we committed to that and we made it work and it happened. Wow, that's and, a great uh, that's, story. That's really how it all launched. Okay, fast forwarding to, to today. You know, there, there's a handful of, of top tier Prevo converters out there. If somebody is shopping and they want to consider a Liberty Coach, from your point of view, what separates Liberty Coach from the other converters out there today? Uh, there's a number of factors. Number one is the fit and finish, the quality of what we do. That is from the behind the scenes, behind the walls, in the bays, uh, the fit and finish of that 
um, the, spa the usage of space. Uh, it's a comment that we get quite often because our interior uh, layouts, my brother Kurt does all the interior layout uh, of the coach and runs our manufacturing facility in North Chicago. So he's hands-on every day down in the shop all the time and between he and his wife Kim, who Kim does the interiors of our coaches, the interior design uh, aspects, uh, they come up with floor plan layout because we're users of the coach and, and can come up with a, a great usage of the space. Um, the next thing that we go into is the technology aspects of what we do. Uh, I started doing the lithium-ion battery changeover in, in uh, 2011, uh, 2010 actually, and then uh, transitioned all of our coaches into that. Uh, and then we transitioned into the Volta system uh, a little over two years ago. Um, the Crustron applications that you see in coaches today, I was the one who brought Crustron into this industry in 2001. I am a Crustron programmer as well. Um, the service of what we've provided between the two facilities that we have, the manufacturing facility in North Chicago, the sales and service facility that I opened up in uh, 2001 in Stewart, Florida. Um, there's a number of aspects that, that uh, really somebody has to, to look at to really understand why we are, uh, the, why we consider ourselves to be, and our customers do, the top, top leader in this industry. The first thing you see, and that's, uh, that's a 2019 over our shoulder over No, there? that's a 2016. Boy, it looks brand new, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's my point here. You're known for your exterior finish, your paint. I know nothing about paint, so I'm going to ask you a very technical question. How do they look so shiny for so many years? What, what's your secret here? Well, the secret to that really has to do with Dean Laux. Uh, I went to Dean uh, in 2012 uh, to come up with some different looks, some different aspects of the coach, because everything was looking the same. All the coaches from uh, American Eagles to Newmars to Newells to Prevo H345s coming down the road, they all were looking the same. Uh, we, I went to Dean and he's been a friend of mine for 30 plus years and uh, we came up with a concept and decided to let him take over and do all the exterior paint designs and, and do the application as well. Um, you're looking at a coach, a 2016 for an example, uh, that has 13 or 14 coats of clear on it. So the depth of what uh, Dean can accomplish uh, can stay new, shiny looking for, for years and years and years. Well, I tell you, they've stood the test of time. Now, there's some sticker shock associated with your paint. Mm -hmm. What do you charge for that? Well, when you look at it, the, uh, if you were to take it on the outside and <coughs> say, okay, fine, here's a coach, paint it. Uh, you're looking at a, a paint uh, aspect that can run up to $150,000. Um, there's a significant increase of paint price that we have in our conversion over what we used to charge or what we used to pay from Prevo uh, all those years that we were doing the, the paint with them. So there's a, a significant increase from there. So if you look at that, you know, subtract off what Prevo charges for paint, which in essence is somewhere between forty to sixty thousand dollars. I guess at this point in time, you know, it, it doesn't take long to do the math on that. It's do it's pricing. customers have ever come to you and say, you know, they say, you know, Frank, we love what you do with your coaches, we love your interiors, we love your technology, but can I get a basic paint scheme or does every liberty go out with one of Dean's paint jobs? Every liberty goes out with one of Dean's paint jobs. No, well, it, it is your signature. Mm -hmm. Now let's go in and move inside. Now, you know, I was able to tour one of the new coaches you had and, and, and just in a few years that I've been involved in the motor coach industry, both as an observer and as an owner, I've noticed a transition because you know how this works. When you start shopping, you go to the, the, the manufacturer's websites and then you go to Prevo stuff or, or any of the other, it might be Prevo community or whatever, and look through the, the one ads, you know, of the pre-owned coaches. I've seen a metamorphosis of your design. And, and I'll be honest with you, five years ago, I, that design did not appeal to me, but I've noticed that today, your designs are going, becoming much more transitional. Is, is this the direction you're going now? But on the other hand, I notice you have different additions. D 
does your styling stay with your additions? I think if you go back uh, through the years, uh, you can see transitions that we've made. Um, go back to the, the mid 90s. You know, we were labeled at that time as a, a Las Vegas show place inside with all the glitz and glamour and what have I you. I had another word for it, but that's a nice way. It and so uh, a lot of people like that. We sold a lot of coaches uh, in, that, uh, in that look. Uh, and then you can probably go into 2001, 2002, and you can start to see the, the, uh, the wood moldings are starting to come in and the, uh, the differences in from vitricor to, to wood veneers. And then you can start moving into uh, the late 2000s and you would see more of a transition to, to the woods. And we have always kind of led that path. And, and we're very proud of that part of it. We've always led through that. And now you're starting to see um, a, another transition because we were doing uh, designs and interior looks that were, again, people wanted that when they were coming in to, uh, to do new coaches, which uh, we brought the open grain veneers uh, into the, uh, into the, uh, into the our, our book of, uh, of interiors five years ago already. And people were liking that because you could touch it and it wouldn't show fingerprints and, and what have you. So we ran that for a, a while, and now this transition that you're seeing in the 2019 uh, aspects is a, is a significant departure from what we've done in the past. And uh, I think this is going to uh, take us a, a run for a few years as well, and, it, and it's evolving still also. Well, I've, I've noticed, and again, your, your, your new interiors are just, I can't think of a better word than transitional. It's not ultra-contemporary. It's not trans, uh, traditional. It, it's a very comfort, open, soft and cushy feel where you still have some hard edges. You, you have the soft feelings. Now, also, I've noticed you've made a, a big changes in your ceiling. They used to be very busy, and they seem they're now much more functional and cleaner. Is that uh, uh, an area that you focused on? Yeah, this again is these changes that are being made or that you see here are, are solely the uh, the work of my brother and his wife, Kurt and Kim. Um, they are continually looking at different design aspects. Uh, we have to be careful on how ceiling designs are done because of air conditioning duct work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's, you can, that's important. Right. I mean, we try to get to nice weather, but right. you know, sometimes it's hot. You know, we yeah. both live down in Florida. We Absolutely. know what that can be like. So I mean, you know, you have to be careful in what you're doing on those aspects because. You, you, you only have so much room that you can deal with because the slide room's coming in and, and different equipment that has to fit into the coach and, and duct work has to be so and so sized and you know you, you don't want to have too you don't want to create an aspect where you've got noise now in duct work because of ceiling designs and what have you. So you know you've got to be able to work around these aspects and make, make these changes. So you know we've had uh, customers come by that or come through that, have wanted to have changes in, in ceiling styles, and so, you know, it's 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 put us to work to to make those uh, make those changes, make those do, things happen. Do you consider Liberty Coach to be a custom coach builder? Customer walks in and said, you know, Frank, I want this here, this here, this here. You know, work with your designers to come up with layout and scheme, or are you more of a spec coach builder that that? changes with the times to, to predict what people are going to want that year. So do I have you on the edge of the seat? Yeah, I'm waiting for that answer too. So don't worry. We're going to pick up where we left off in part two. And also Frank's going to provide some insights on the inner workings of Liberty Coach. And we're going to address the big topic of lithium ion batteries and how they differ from AGM and lead acid batteries when it comes to comfort and convenience for the motorhome user. Now remember, the easiest way to keep posted of my news stories and videos is to simply like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the gadget guru. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. Here's a link to part two of the series.